Hey class, Professor Kennedy here with this week's edition of Chalk Talk, brought to you by the Ray Morgan Company. I wanted to take a look at the Lions. Now, coming out of last week's game of the Texans, we talked about DeAndre Hopkins, and you saw how uh, you know Deshaun Watson, the quarterback, and the Houston Texans like to use him to generate big plays, especially in critical times. So in light of what we learned from the Texans, I wanted to focus on the Detroit Lions next and talk about how starting drives in the second half are so much of a momentum gains for offenses. In the second half right here on the 27-yard line, they're going to come out and they're going to have play action. Now, New York Giants decide to bring a zone blitz. They're going to bring this linebacker here and this corner here. Reminiscent of what Paul Gunther does with our defense because they have the exact same blitz. With that being said, you're going to have to play thirds, deep thirds, by the safeties and the corners. Can't let anything behind you. The Lions are going to run a two-man route combination, but they're just also going to bring a simple drag. Now, the one this puts the most stress on is the middle linebacker because when this zone blitz happens, he's got to run over here, and then he's got this entire zone to worry about, which is a lot of area. Matthew Stafford is smart. He knows that once the play action brings in the will linebacker, there's going to be a big old hole right here, and he's going to hit Amendola for 15 yards. Let's take a look. The motion tells him he's got zone. Now, on the snap of the ball, he's got play action, but he also knows that he's max protected. There's the drag route to Amendola right behind the linebacker. Matthew Stafford hits him in stride. You see how the linebacker is out of place. He can't be right or he can't be wrong to stop that play. I want to draw your attention to the Will linebacker. That reluctancy right there by number 47. If you're going to blitz, go now. You got to get to the quarterback. You can't allow someone like Matthew Stafford to sit back there and have all that much time. He's way too accurate of a quarterback. So the blitz has got to get there. So this is the second play of the same drive. Now, I want to say this. I've been thoroughly impressed with our front four, especially the amount of pressure they've been able to generate. Guys have done a really good job. But there are times, especially in the, during this drive in particular, where you've got to get to the quarterback. If you're only going to rush four, you've got to break down that protection and get to that quarterback and cause a little pressure on him, make him feel hurried. Can't allow someone as accurate as Matthew Stafford to just sit back there and have all day to pick you apart. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this next play. The Lions are going to run short motion. And 17 is going to run a seam route, which is going to take up the corner and the safety to drive them deep. Then the slot receiver is just going to run a simple dig route, put himself in the middle of the field. Now, the thing to remember here with a simple two route combination, as I said, the front four has got to get there, but the linebackers are going to have to make sure they get in their zones and they're sound in the zones. But let's watch how when Matthew Stafford gets time and a decent pass route, how he can pick a defense apart. Here's a short motion. Now the speedy 17 takes up the safety and 19 cuts in behind him. It's really difficult to defend because look at the distance between where the in route cut happens and where number 34 is. So if your nickel corner is playing zone, he's got to get even deeper. Very accurate. He was able to drop in and over the nickel corner and down before the safety. So let's fast forward a moment. Same drive, two plays later, second down and eight. I was particularly mindful of this, this play because it's a lot like what Houston did with Deshaun Watson last week. And Matthew Stafford doesn't have the speed of Watson, but it's still be mindful that a lot of teams are going to run it, especially when they see that you have trouble with it, defending it. The route distribution on the RPO is going to be this. Amadola's going to come flat, Hoxson's going to go long, and Galladay is going to go intermediate. Now everyone's going to be covered, but this nickel corner can ill afford to get lost in space. More importantly, the RPO man has got to get to the quarterback. Make it hard on the quarterback. Matthew Stafford's not going to outrun anybody, but you got to make sure once you see that he still has the ball in his hands that you go after him. See Amadola slide underneath? Now, you got to go and he forces the issue, but look who gets lost in the translation. Whether it's by design, somebody has got to have the underneath man. So there's the miscommunication. So in closing, I know that sometimes the defense is on its heels. I know there are times where you get tired. Heck, I played offensive line, and we wanted to take it to you for long, sustaining drives. It really is demoralizing when teams can run and pass on you. But Detroit's run game has been somewhat limited over the last couple weeks due to injuries, and so they are a passing team, which means that's going to be putting stress on coverage as well as pass rush. If, the, if you're able to harass the quarterback and let him know that you're there, he's going to force a lot of rush throws. But if you let him stand back there, he's going to pick you apart, which is going to put stress on your secondary. More importantly, in the secondary, when you have an opportunity to make a play, when you have an opportunity to make a break on the ball, get that turnover. It can really turn the tide for the team in the right direction. 
Well, that does it for this week's edition of Chalk Talk. I'll see you next week.